Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Order of Operations in Fractions. This is part one. Or you could say Order of Operations with Fractions, part one. So here what we're going to have is very large expressions with a very large fraction bar. It's going to be easier for me to explain it just by writing a problem down. Let's say you have 4 plus 3 times uh, 6, and then you have divided by 9. But all of this stuff is in the numerator of a really large fraction with the number 2 on the bottom. So you remember fraction has a numerator, a top uh, number, and a denominator, the bottom number. The denominator of this fraction is just a 2, but the numerator is all of this junk here. Now, all of these problems are going to have this kind of thing with a big fraction bar and the portion, the math that's in the top and the math that's in the bottom, we have to know how to do this. Because later on, when we solve more complicated problems, we will have problems like this. So the good news is, as long as you know order of operations, which you should have already learned from the last lesson, we're good to go. All I want you to remember when you see problems like this with a large fraction bar, remember the very first part of order of operations, the highest priority is to do parentheses. So every time you see a fraction bar, I want you to envision or imagine the there's an invisible set of parentheses that goes around the top like this, an invisible set goes around the bottom. If I were to have written it with parentheses like that, then you would know I have to do what's in parentheses first, always, right? So if I drew the parentheses here, you would know that I have to do what's inside first. And then once I get all that done, then the last thing I will do is the fraction bar, which is a division, right? When I take the top divided by the bottom. But when you don't write those invisible parentheses, I need you to know that anytime you see any fraction, uh, you know, always has invisible parentheses. For instance, 2 plus 4 plus 6, and you have a fraction bar, 3 minus 2, let's say. So anytime you see a fraction with a large fraction bar, you need to envision or imagine invisible parentheses that are around the numerator and around the denominator. If you can rem remember that, the rest of the problem becomes very simple. Because if we have uh, 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 parentheses surrounding this, then we know we have to do what's inside. Now we know when we have the choices of inside of here, uh, addition, division, multiplication, we know that the addition will come last. We do multiply and divide left to right. So what we do is we rewrite it. We, we say we have 4 plus the 3 times 6 and the multiplication and the division here at the same priority level. We do the left to right 3 times 6 is 18, and then we have divide by 9. Fraction bar with a 2 on the bottom. Again, imagine invisible parentheses around the top and around the bottom. So I have to do, again, the numerator. I have to get it all done first. Here I have division. That's going to come first. 18 divided by 9 is 2. All right? And then I can start to go a little horizontal. Again, invisible parentheses. So again, you need to imagine the invisible parentheses around the 4 plus 2. So I have to do that first, which is a 6. Now I've got it all down where I have 6 on the top and 2 on the bottom. Now, I can think of Im imaginary parentheses around this if I want, but since there's nothing inside to do, I can kind of dispense with it. I don't need to think about the imaginary parentheses because I've done everything on the top and on the bottom. So the final thing is to take the 6 and divide by the 2 because all fractions are division, which you get an answer of 3. 3 is the final answer. So that's going to be how we do every single one of these problems. You do the numerator first, or in parallel with working on the denominator, because they have both invisible sets of parentheses. And then the very last step is just going to be to divide the two, the top, uh, divided by the bottom. All right, let's get a little more practice. What if I have 5 times 2, uh, close parentheses, plus 5, and then I have a fraction bar with a 3 on the bottom? So again, I want to... This is my original problem, but in my mind, I'm going to imagine the numerator has another set of parentheses surrounding the whole thing. And the denominator does as well, but there's nothing much of interest in the denominator. So I say, well, I have to work on this set of parentheses. Inside of here, I have a set of parentheses, and so I have to do what's inside of here first. So what am I going to do? The 5 times 2, which is 10. Right? And then I have a 3 on the bottom. All I've done is done the 10. I can, I don't carry these parentheses, I can drop these parentheses around the 10 now. And the pink parentheses, I added those myself just to visualize, so I don't need to write those again. I now know there's like an invisible set of parentheses around 
the 10 plus 5, and so what I'm going to have 10 plus 5 is 15. I have to do that, and then I have 15 divided by 3. Now I only have one operation left, 15 divided by 3 is 5. And that's the final answer. So every one of these is going to be like that. When you see a fraction bar, you must do the top and you must do the bottom. Although in this case, there wasn't anything to do in the bottom because I'm giving you simpler problems in the beginning. Let's take a look at 2 plus 3 multiply by 4 fraction bar 10. So I know I'm not going to draw them anymore, but I know that there's like an invisible parentheses around the entire numerator. So I have to do that first. But inside of there, I've got another set of parentheses. I have to do this 2 plus 3 first. The 2 plus 3 is going to be 5, right? And I have the times 4 still. Again, there's all I did was replace this with a 5, drop the parentheses, and now I have the times 4. I have to do what's inside of the invisible parentheses. 5 times 4 is 20, right? And now I can just do the straight division. 20 divided by 10 is 2. And so 2 is the final answer. So you see how a very complex looking problem turns into something we know how to do. So let's crank up the complexity a touch. Let's say we had 2 squared times 4 minus 2, and all of that is in the numerator with a 2 on the bottom. So what am I going to do? Well, I imagine invisible parentheses around the numerator, so I have to do that first. But inside of there is another set of parentheses. But inside of that is a exponent and also a multiplication, so I have to do the exponent first. So 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. This times 4 will come later. I'll leave the parentheses in place. And so make sure you understand what I've done here. All I've done is replace, replace the 2 squared with a 4. That's it. That's the first thing I did. Now again, I have to continue working on this numerator. I have uh, 4 times 4, which is 16. I can drop the parentheses now, still have the minus 2 and I'm dividing by 2. Now again, I'm imagining invisible parentheses here, so I have to do that first. 16 minus 2 is what? 16 minus 2 is 14. Now I can drop the, parentheses, the invisible parentheses in my mind because there's nothing much else to do. I've done all the calculations for the numerator. And now 14 divided by 2 is 7. So 7 is the final answer. So that's all it boils down to. Imagine an extra set of parentheses that's really not there, and then it'll help you. 9 times 4 minus 6 plus 3, and in the numerator, that's what we have. In the denominator, it's just a 3. All right, what do we do? Invisible parentheses surrounding this, and of course this. I have to do what's inside of here first. I have another set of parentheses. I have to do the 6 plus 3, which is going to be a 9. So I rewrite the numerator. 9 plus, not a plus, sorry, 9 times 4 minus 6 plus 3 is 9. I can drop the parentheses around the 6 plus 3. And then on the bottom, I have a 3. Now what do I do? Again, invisible parentheses, I have to do what's inside of here. Multiplication comes first. 9 times 4, 36, minus 9. That stays in the numerator. Again, invisible parentheses, what is 36 divided by 9? I'm sorry, 36 minus 9 is going to be 27. 27. And of course, I can drop, there's nothing else there, so I can kind of drop my mental parentheses. So now I just have 27 divided by 3, which is 9. And that's the final answer. So no matter how complex your problems get, no matter how ugly they look, we're going to be doing the same thing over and over again. Imagine invisible parentheses. So let's say we have 3 plus 6 divided by, uh, here we have a 2 plus, then we have a 7 minus 1 squared, and that's all in the numerator of a fraction with a 7 on the bottom. So I imagine that numerator has parentheses around it, so I have to do it first. But inside of it, I have this uh, parentheses here. So what am I going to have? I'm going to have 3 plus 6 divided by 2 plus, but then I do what's inside the parentheses. 7 minus 1 is 6 squared. I drop that parentheses now, and then in the bottom is just a 7. So now I look at the numerator again. I'm working on this first. I do the exponent first. 6 times 6 is 36. So I'm going to rewrite that as 3 plus 6 divided by 2 plus 6 times 6 is 36. All of that's in the numerator with a 7. So again, a visible parentheses here. What do I do first in the numerator? I have to do the division first. It comes before any division. So rewrite 3 plus 
do the division. Six divided by two is three. Rewrite the rest. I'm not doing anything but one thing at a time. Now again, in that numerator, I have a bunch of addition. I go left to right. So three plus three is six plus 36. Again, invisible parentheses, 36 plus six, 42. And now I'm dividing by seven. 42 divided by seven is six. And that's the final answer, six. So look at such a complex looking problem, but once I just explained to you that a numerator has a, like its own parentheses around it, and the denominator as well, then it becomes quite simple. Now let's conquer something where we have to take the training wheels off a little bit. Let's say we have 13 minus five, multiply that by two, that's the numerator. But now the denominator will be 10 minus five plus three. So this is different because in all the previous problems, I had just a number in the bottom, number in the bottom, number in the bottom. Here, I have a numerator with some complex stuff, and I have a denominator with some more complex stuff, and so now it's a little more complex. But in your mind, you need to think this numerator has its own set of parentheses around it, invisible. This denominator has its own set of parentheses invisible around it. So what does that mean? I have to do what's inside of here first, and then I have to do what's inside of here first, and then when I get it down to numbers, then I will do the division between them at the very end. Now you could just work on the numerator by itself first and then work on the denominator by itself, but what we can really do in practice is just do one step at a time in each the numerator and the denominator, work on them in parallel, because yeah, technically you do, uh, all you have to do is make sure all the parentheses are done first. So we can work on them in parallel uh, at the same time. So inside of here, I have parentheses. I have to do 13 minus five first, and I'll get eight. So this is an eight and a half times two. On the bottom, I can work on that again in parallel. I have to do this parentheses. Five plus three, again, is eight. So it'd be 10 minus eight. So you see, I've, I've dropped the pink parentheses because they're not you know, super helpful at this point anymore. I know that there's an invisible parentheses around them, but I've done this first, and then I've done also this first. If I wanted to, I could just work on the numerator first and then work on the denominator, but it's totally okay to do them in parallel. So invisible parentheses, I work on this. Eight times two is 16. Invisible parentheses, I work on this. 10 minus two, 10 minus eight is two. Now I just have numbers and I can just divide them. 16 divided by two is eight. And that is the final answer. So look at how complex this problem looks. It looks really tough, but once you know, the little, I don't even want to call it a trick, but the way to think about these things, then they become much simpler. So let's conquer something a little more complex. What about five to the power of two minus 12, close parentheses, minus two plus five, right? And then that is all in the numerator, but then I have nine minus eight cubed and then I have a plus two. Looks incredibly complex, but really it's not because you know that this numerator has its own parentheses around it and this denominator has its own parentheses around it. So you can do them both in parallel one step at a time. So for the numerator, I have, again, now two sets of parentheses. So I know inside of this one, I have to do the exponent first. So I'm going to write and start by writing it over. Five times five is 25. I still have the minus 12, I still have the parentheses here, I still have the minus sign here. I can work on this one next. Two plus five is seven. Then, then I have a denominator, and then I can work on this one. Nine minus eight is one, but I still have to have a cube plus two. You see what I'm doing? I'm working on the numerator separately from the denominator, but inside the numerator, since I had two parentheses, I do what I can inside of here doing that first step, and then what I can inside of here. You can rewrite it over and over and over again, just doing one little thing at a time, that's fine. But when the problems get long, you need to start doing things in parallel. Or otherwise, you're just gonna be writing forever. So now, we have 25 minus 12. We have an invisible parentheses, we have to do the numerator here in the parentheses. 25 minus 10 would be 15, so minus 12 has to be 13. And then we have that minus seven there. In the denominator, again, invisible parentheses, we have to do the exponent first. One cubed is one times one times one. All I get is a one. Now look, it's starting to become very simple. 13 minus seven. 13 minus seven is what? Six. And then one plus two is three. 
right? So 13 minus 7 is 6, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, and then 6 divided by 3 finally is 2. So out of all this junk, it turns out to be a nice answer of 2. You just gotta take, you gotta look at practice. You've gotta solve problems. I mean, there's just no way around it. You can't just read a book and know how to do this. You have to just get your pencil out and do it. If you make a mistake, learn from it, right? 20 divided by four, close parentheses, times three squared. All of that is in the numerator. And then in the bottom is six squared minus two, and then minus 19. All right, for this problem, we know we have to do the numerator separate from the denominator, so we focus on the numerator. In here, we have parentheses, so 20 divided by 4 has to come first, which will be 5, and I can then drop the parentheses. I have to rewrite everything else in the numerator. The denominator, I have this set of parentheses. Inside, I have to do the square first. 6 times 6 is 36, minus 2. I'll keep the parentheses there, and then I have the minus 19 on the outside. All right, so next, back to the numerator. I have this square I have to do first. Three times three is nine, so I'll rewrite the five times and replace the three times three with nine. In the denominator, the parentheses is 36 and minus two is 34, minus 19. In the top, nine times five is 45. And on the bottom, I have to do 34 minus 19, which is 15. You can think of it as 34 minus 20 would be 24, 14, uh, 14, but then I have to kind of add one more to be 15 because I really only subtracted 19. And then 45 divided by 15 is what? Three, because three times 15 is 45 and you can verify that. So the final answer is three. All right, we only have one more problem here. We'll call it a day. It looks hard, but really it's not gonna be that bad. Let's take a look at eight minus four plus six divided by two. And in the denominator, we have 18 minus four squared times two minus three. Looks very hard, but really all you have to do is consider the numerator to have its own parentheses and the denominator has its own parentheses as well. So what are we gonna do? We work on the numerator. This set of parentheses has subtraction and addition, so we go left to right. So what's gonna happen is eight minus four is four. We still have that plus six, we'll do it later. We're just rewriting everything. And on the bottom, we have this parentheses. Inside, we have to do the exponent first. So it'll be 18 minus four times four is 16. Everything else gets, be, gets rewritten. So we have the 18 minus 16. Now back to the numerator. This parentheses, four plus six is 10, then we can drop the parentheses. And then back to the denominator, this parentheses has to happen, 18 minus 16 is two. We can drop that parentheses. Then we have the times two minus three, again, all in the bottom. Finally, on the top, 10 minus two is five. I'm sorry, 10 divided by two is five. On the bottom, we have multiplication and subtraction. We have to multiply first, two times two is four. And then we have that minus three. The five sticks around. We do this next, invisible parentheses. Remember four minus three is one. And then we have five over one. And so five divided by one is just five. So the answer is five. So even though the problem looked incredibly complex with parentheses and squares and divisions and multiplications, it really wasn't that many steps because we work on the numerator uh, and the denominator kind of in parallel. Every time we cycle through, we just do one, the next most logical uh, thing according to order of operations for the numerator and for the denominator separately. And then once we get them all down to where there's just numbers, you just divide them at the end, and that's the answer. That's the, the procedure, essentially. So I'd like you to solve all of these. It's real easy to watch them and you think, oh, I get it. But until you sit down and think and decide for what, what you need to do for your own self and for your own decision making, then, only then, will you have confidence in what you're doing. So solve them. And then follow me on to part two. I'm going to give you a little more practice with order of operations involving fractions.